second Sunday of Christmas. We are broadcasting live from St. Philip Lutheran Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. We join together for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend to your creation. We find our sense of self in immaterial wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are the children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child, those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall, and with consolation, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a water garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice, and the young men and the old shall be married. I will turn their mourning to joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their full fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll read responsibly Psalm 147, beginning with the 12th verse. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Who has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God sends out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost gashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against God's cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows, the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob, statutes and judgment to Israel. The Lord has not been the other nation. They do not know God's judgment. Hallelujah. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, beginning with the third. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption of, as his children through Jesus Christ. According to the good 
to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will. So that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your word, made flesh among us, making you known among us. Amen. So this is a gospel that we're all pretty familiar with. It's one of my favorite passages. It's one of those that kind of makes you play with it and think about it a little bit. The whole idea of the word was God and the word was with God and the word has been here forever. This 
is the gospel text that backs up the line in the creed talking about the Spirit proceeding from the Father and the Son. This is the gospel text that underlines the fact that the Godhead was the Trinity even before Jesus was born. That Jesus was before Jesus was. Untangle that sentence. I mean, that's kind of what this entire text feels a little bit like, right? Like, yeah, that. Wait, what? The whole idea of the word being present before the word was present. The whole idea that the Jesus who walked among us as a, as a, as a people was present from the beginning of creation and is present still today, even separated from the period of years in which Christ was a people who peopled with the people. It's a text fitting for this kind of weird in betweeny time of year. I mean, here we are at the church, continuing to celebrate Christmas. Meanwhile, don't walk into any store expecting any Christmas anything because it's all Valentine's Day now. Maybe even Easter. Like, the world has moved on. The world started Christmas in, like, August. So if you waited for Advent and then Christmas to actually listen to Christmas music on the radio, you missed your chance. Here we are at church, wonderfully finally getting to sing all of the wonderful Christmas hymns that we know and that we love for two weeks. Two weeks of Christmas. Meanwhile, the world is like Christmas. That, that was last week. How many Christmas trees did you see on the curb on the morning of the 26th? There's a church down the road from my house, and we always try to notice when the nativity disappeared. In the past, it had disappeared as early as the 26th. This year, it lasted a little bit longer, but it was gone yesterday. Not sure when it disappeared. One day it's there, then poof, it's gone. This in-between time for the church is celebrating the fullness of the promise that is Jesus among us. We celebrate the fullness of the, and the fulfillment of the promise of Christ. And the rest of the world is finished with that and moved on to the next. Santa came, let's go. Meanwhile, we're dwelling in the midst of that fulfilled promise. We're wallowing in it. We're singing all of the hymns and all of the verses of all of the hymns, and we're loving every second of it. Because we're wallowing in the presence of Christ with us. And no matter what's going on in the world around us, even when things look and feel a bit different, as we find ourselves virtual again, after months of getting back to being in person and virtual, but even in the midst of all the in-betweeniness and all of the changes that happen in the world around us, we revel in the presence and the life and the promise fulfilled that is Christ. And we revel in the promise fulfilled even as we hold out hope for the promises yet to come. This particular gospel text is one that I also enjoy reading from the message. It's a paraphrase, and sometimes you read the message and you read the NRSV and you go, hmm, not sure how those are connected. But sometimes you read the message and you read the NRSV and you're like, ooh, I like how this or that was highlighted. So this morning I'm going to read also our gospel text from the message. The Word was first, the Word present to God, God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without him. What came into existence was life, 
and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. There once was a man, his name was John, he, sent by God to point out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe in. John was not himself the light. He was there to show the way to the light. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. He was in the world. The world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. John pointed him out and called, this is the one, the one I told you was coming after me, but in fact was ahead of me. He has always been ahead of me, has always had the first word. We all live off his generous abundance, gift after gift after gift. We got the basics from Moses, and then this exuberant giving and receiving, this endless knowing and understanding, all this came through Jesus, the Messiah. No one has ever seen God, not so much as a glimpse. This one-of-a-kind God expression, who exists at the very heart of the Father, has made him plain as day. There's several parts about the way the message paraphrases this text that I particularly love. I love the idea of the one-of-a-kind God expression who makes God plain as day because the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. I love that phrasing because it brings it home in kind of a different way than the idea of dwelling amongst us. Because we can think of dwelling amongst us as this kind of ethereal over there thing. But moving into the neighborhood? And actually the Greek that is translated for dwelling amongst us, I love this, is best translated as pitched a tent. So Jesus, the word made flesh, shows up and pitches a tent right here. Like Jesus pitched a tent in your front yard. Jesus is there in the neighborhood, and Jesus brings with Jesus self a knownness of God that we can't accomplish without Jesus and his flesh and blood self. That flesh and blood self of Jesus, that personness of Jesus, invites us to see the Godness in the personness of each other. Much like John the Baptizer, John who creates the space for Jesus, pointing to the life light, pointing to the life giver, pointing to the Word made flesh. Much like John, Archbishop Desmond Tutu points to the humanity that underscores the divinity. In December, we lost the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and the world kind of collectively went, <sighs> and the quotes of Archbishop Desmond Tutu have made their way throughout the internet, once again, as they have throughout his life, reminding us, as Archbishop Tutu did, to point to the godness in our midst. Archbishop Tutu is quoted as saying that a person is a person because they recognize others 
as persons. And he's also quoted pointing to the diversity in the personness, the diversity in the neighborhood that makes God more and more known because God in Jesus is located in our neighborhood, in our midst, in our neighbors, in our backyard, in our front yard. Have you ever been to a campground and made note of the diversity of everyone who is camping at any given moment? Like even more so than, than some of the most diverse neighborhoods, a campground has people from everywhere all at the same time, or at least the potential for people from everywhere all at the same time. And the diversity that's found in the midst of those tents, with Jesus in the midst, in the midst of the neighborhood, allows us to see pieces and parts of the Godhead in Jesus through the personness of Jesus that we don't see if we just look at the people who look like us. We don't see the fullness of God when we look only at the expressions of God that we expect. The Word made flesh invites us to look for the God in the midst of the unexpected places. To look for God in the manger, not the palace. To look for God as a baby, not a king. To look for God as our neighbor, not as someone apart or separated or differentiated. The Word made flesh lives with us and reminds us of the grace heaped upon grace, the abundance, the gift after gift after gift granted by God through Christ Jesus in our very neighborhood, in our very midst. That grace that allows us to see all the many facets of God through all the many facets of all of the personness of all of the persons around. All of the peopleness. All of the divinity in the midst of the humanity. So I invite you and I challenge you as we continue this season of Christmas and we continue throughout the cyclical church year, knowing that while we dwell in fulfilled promises right now, we look forward also to more promises yet to come. More waiting, lots more waiting, but also more promises fulfilled. More opportunities to see God with us. So I invite you and I challenge you, in the midst of all of this in between, in the third year of a pandemic, in the looking around at all of the things that are so different, but yet so much the same, I invite you to look for God in the unexpected places. The expected places, too. Don't forget those. But look for God in the unexpected places. Look in the faces of neighbors and friends. Look for the presence of God everywhere. Because God's pitched a tent. And the word is here with us.
we join together in professing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in one in God, God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You make yourself known in the gift of language in diverse forms. Draw our attention to those who communicate through sign, braille, and technology. Make your church a place where all methods of communication are celebrated. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning. Thank you for waking us up today to witness and share your abundance. Awaken us always to your wisdom and deepen our care for your natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Emmanuel, in your name we are assured that you are with us. Train nations and peoples to honor and respect one another, especially those whose names and identities have been mistreated, neglected, or oppressed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You adopt us as your beloved ones. Accompany parents and children navigating the adoption process, especially those in the foster system. Sustain those struggling with infertility or pregnancy loss. Tenderly embrace all in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You journey with us through change. Guide those assuming new roles in this congregation or making transitions in their families, workplaces, or communities. As the seasons and the calendar change, equip us for unexpected challenges. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. We give you thanks for all who modeled lives of loving service. Lead us in your grace until with all your saints we enter the fullness of your glory. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you. Confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. As the As family of Saint, Saint Philip, we, we ask that you open our ears to hear your call for us and guide our feet in following. Help us to be good stewards of our time and treasure, and to put our trust in you to provide. We ask for blessings on the life of our pastor, and that your spirit guide us in relationship and in ministry. We put our hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us.
us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give we you give thanks, thanks and praise. praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give we you give thanks, thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Partners in ministry, what is our calling? Jesus asks that we love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. Jesus tells us that a second is like it, and we shall love our neighbors as ourselves. We answer that call, and we go out to share the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. There are mission opportunities listed in our weekly bodybuilding news. A few that I would like to highlight include the fact that we are virtual today and for the next couple weeks. That means that all meetings and classes will also be held virtually. So the Acts and Grow studies on Wednesday will be held via Zoom. There's information about that on the website and in the bodybuilding news. If you have other meetings and gatherings that are scheduled to be in person and you need assistance, contact Jane in the office. Also, the Brown Bag Ministry this upcoming Saturday has been canceled. And on Sunday, January 16th at 3.30 in the afternoon, there will be an online and in-person interfaith celebration of the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And that will be held at Christ the King in Cary. And now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. Amen.
in peace. Rejoice in Christ our Savior. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Recording stopped.